Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Kit, who is in this uh, really nice, this is a Dodge Caravan? It is a Dodge Caravan. Uh huh. And are you full-timing it or just uh, trips? I'm currently full-timing. I've been on the road since June of last year. Oh yeah, oh, a year and a half then. Yeah, no, June of 2017. So, oh, 17. Yes, right. yes. So, and so almost six months now. Six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you think so far? I'm having an amazing time. It's been a it's it's been a real adventure for sure. And uh, it was something you choose. You wanted to try out a new way of life. I did indeed. And uh, how has the minivan worked out? Has it been enough space? Yeah. So surprisingly, a lot of people think there's no way to make yeah. a, a minivan be livable for any length of time, but. For myself and my little dog, it's it's been perfect for us. Really? Yeah, I'm I'm a bit of a conscious minimalist to start with, so I I tend to just have what I need, and if I need other things as I go along, I'll add and subtract as necessary. But I'm really happy. Really happy. <laughs> I'm really happy. <laughs> Good. I am too. I live in a van and for a long time, and I'm really yeah. happy doing it. I'm yeah. really delighted to find people. Uh, so what made what attracted you to it? Well, no, well, if you were a man, I'd say you must have had a midlife crisis. Right. But uh, what attracted you to it? Well, I had a midlife crisis, and women get it too, I guess. <laughs> and I, I guess I, I remember thinking I'm either going to have a crisis or I'm going to have an adventure, and I decided to have an adventure. So, I. My background is in social work. I was a social worker for years. I went into the Canadian military as a social work officer and I was injured and uh, suddenly life changed. There were things that I wasn't doing that I had done before and there were a lot of gaps in meaningful experiences for me. And it was time to look for a path to start adding those important things back into my life and it just happened to be the right time in my life. My kids had grown up, my work life had changed and I, it was just a good path for me. And uh, has life been an adventure for the last six months? Would you? <laughs> yes, it certainly has. So I, I think I've traveled about 30,000 kilometers since I got on the road. I'm, I'm from Canada, so I, I'm currently calling Ottawa home. So I set off for the east coast of Canada and then I turned around and I went all the way to the west coast. My daughter joined me, my 24 year old daughter for six weeks. And she traveled with me. We were able to travel comfortably for, for six weeks together. Certainly. And so uh, are you going to, what's your future hold for you then? Okay, so I can only leave Canada for six months at a time. Right. So I need to be back uh, in Ottawa beginning of May. And um, right now I'm time sharing an apartment with my son who goes to school in Ottawa. So he's looking after things. I go home and then he goes away to work. And I think we're going to be able to do that next year. After that, I'll make a decision as to whether I need to keep an apartment or not. Keep a, what do they say? Sticks and bricks. Sticks and bricks. Right, That's whether I need say. to do that. Um, yeah. Right now, I feel like I don't live there anymore. I'm quite happy to live exactly where I am, right. which is wherever I am. <laughs> but I, I have no doubt that, that this is now a part of my life. Right. I'm just not sure the technicality of how that will unfold. Yes, it's, it's harder in BC. In yeah. Canada, because yes. you got cold winters. Well, that's right. Yeah, and, uh, my my daughter and I did six weeks coming across the the Rocky Mountains, and our goal was to have uh, a week of winter camping without paying for it, and we did it. It was successful, but it's kind of one of those experiences you look back on and go, "Wow, you know, you're proud that you survived, but you're not really sure you want to do it again." Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm really impressed with what I've seen in your van. <laughs> Would you mind showing us around? I'd be happy. To. Okay. Great. Kit, I'm really, this is the most unusual van setup I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen a lot of them look exactly the same, and I've never seen anything like this. This is your design. It is. And did you build it? I didn't physically build it. So what happened is I watched videos and looked at Pinterest and talked to people on Facebook. Um, just getting an idea of how people set up their vans. And then I spent about three months in an empty van once I took the um, seats out. And I had a, just a, a crate 
that I would sit on in there and I'd sleep in different directions and I would think about how I wanted to use it. I started sketching what I wanted. I laid out everything I thought I wanted to bring. I thought, okay, where am I going to put all this? And then I had a friend who helped me do a 3D drawing. And that led me to start interviewing cabinet makers, carpenters, people on uh, Kijiji, which is kind of like a like a Craigslist kind of thing, like just in the classifieds, people looking for work, until I found a, a pair of fellows who were just the perfect team. And uh, they tolerated me being out at the work site every day <laughs> for about six weeks uh, while we figured out how to do this day by day. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they built it and they just used the plans that I had. Okay, so I guess I have to start with saying that I'm five foot two and three quarters and do not drop that three quarters because <laughs> those matter important. they matter when you're in a space this small they actually do, yes. i'm kind of kidding but kind of not kidding um i'm able to side sleep in the van so that makes a big difference for it this does. particular build because i was able to think about the rest of the space in a different way right so my bed goes side to side i've got over three feet wide um, and and, and behind about? the driver's area. That's yes, really unusual. It is. I don't think I've ever seen a van do that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I like it though. Thank you. I like so it. So in terms of the sleeping space, I'll just add that there's a table that slides in here. So there would be a table right here. There is, but it's only this high. Right. It's only about five inches off the ground. Mm -hmm. And the point is for it to butt up exactly to that bed so that I can take the two cushions off the back of my bed, which that's now in sort of couch, couch mode. Right. You know, if I just wanted to sit around during the day. But if, I, if my daughter traveled with me again, I would, I would leave the table in here and I would bring those two cushions down. She'd sleep with her head at this end and we would share foot space. And this whole uh, unit on the side is totally unique to me. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> The pull I guess out that's here. because it came out of my head. <laughs> it, it did, and this was your idea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The pull out here yeah. is, is unbelievably creative and brilliant to me. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. So tell, so tell us all about okay, that. You just so, wanted to get, gain more space. Yes. So there was a couple things. One is I knew that I did not want to cook in my minivan. Okay. For a number of reasons. I know people do it and it's cool. Whatever people do, it works for them. But I didn't want to. I didn't want the steam. I was worried about condensation. I cook a lot. That's the other thing. You know, I'll often spend half an hour cooking because I enjoy it. It's like a hobby. So I didn't, I knew I would never want to cook inside. So then that became obvious. Okay, so I'll cook outside. How will I do that? And then I just thought, well, if everything's in one drawer, it just simplifies the design. The whole kitchen in the one The whole kitchen. Box. So it, now it didn't happen overnight because of course you have to find the right like the right pieces right. of appliances that actually fit. So and I just kept things simple. This is just wood on wood. Yeah. So so it's kind of old-fashioned furniture, right? Yeah. It just you just glide it in and out. So the other thing was finding a, a faucet uh -huh. that that I could tuck in right. because of course most faucets do that again are, okay I'm not sure, sure. yeah just like that this actually goes all the way up and over wow for washing your yeah, face that is unique. so I needed clearance there and I needed clearance underneath as well mm -hmm. because it's like a it's like a sled yes so there's a two inch gap and I use that so from my from my sink I just have a hose connected so that my gray water just comes out I don't collect my gray water. I just use a biodegradable soap and, you know, minimize it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that tucks up and then it, the whole thing just slides in and it's pretty easy. So you just lift it and push it. Like it's really not hard. Now sometimes I have to stop it and just tuck the hose up a little bit, but it just goes like that. It's, it's, that didn't look all that hard. No, it's not all that hard. And then, you know, it's just... And then it's gone. Amazing. And that's it. So the other thing is uh, the, the cutting board is designed by uh, one of the builders had this idea and I just loved it. He said, why don't you make a removable, a removable cutting board so that you can access your propane tank. So yeah, so I just, it's got a regulator on. I just turn it off at night. I ventilate inside. That's it. 
And so this way, when I wear out the when I wear out the cutting board, I can replace it easily. So, and I see you have a fridge. I do. That is a trucker's fridge. So this whole area is essentially my. It takes care of all my food needs. Right. So I keep my tins lying down because I can't stand when things are behind things and I can't see what they are. The solar is a, it's a Samlex MSK 135. 135 135 watts. 135 watts. Yeah. And it's a portable system that goes into a, a little cat like a suitcase. Yes, a little suitcase. Yeah. And yeah. that has uh, served you and that's all you've been needed for yeah, your fridge in, and in, your fans? In, and in fact the solar, because I live in Canada half of the year, right. um, we're, the sun is not as dependable, no. so most camping trips will involve at least one or two rain days, and sometimes, in certain times of the year, a lot more. So I have the van mechanically altered to charge my in-house battery, oh, yes. and I, for me, that has been probably one of the best decisions I've made in terms of my whole power, how I think of power in this van. Because it's a minivan, I toot around really easy, right? Like I. It's easy for me to run to town. I don't have to disconnect anything. So a half an hour, it seems like, is all I need to charge my battery. So most days, I'm, I, I'm rarely somewhere. I, although the next part of my trip, I'm going to slow down for sure. But so far, I've never been somewhere long enough to drain my battery without the solar. So on this end, you just have some storage at the end I of do. your unit here? Yeah, my kids kind of laugh at me because I call everything something but this is the um this is the bathroom here this is sort of the, where i keep all my toilet toiletries uh -huh. yeah this is the library i just keep my journaling books whatever i'm reading um i don't know if you can see the bars on my windows uh the, yes so i struggled for a really long time with velcro and suction cups and how am i going to make this go up and one night i had a dream about a yardstick that was plastic that could bend and I was like, that's it. That's, that's the answer. And so I just had these carpet things cut and they flex just enough that they sit in the lip of the window. And uh, when I'm not using them, there's a little place down there that they can be anchored. Slide in. down. It's just a little storage spot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is where, this is also what I, I call this the control center here. Right. <laughs> there's an awful lot of electrical stuff going on, but it, it's useful. So I've got a, a propane and carbon monoxide detector uh -huh. just in case. Um, I have an overhead. This is like a marine light that I got. That's also a very underused um, resource for people because boat people know a lot about electricity and they have a lot of products you can't find at the at the RV store. So, yes. so I've got a marine light. I've got a, a switch for my fridge so that when I'm not using it, I can turn it off. A place to plug in with 12 volt. I don't know. I kind of overdid it on the, <laughs> on the electrical, but I have a 12 volt and a 120, a 120, and uh, a place to plug in my computer. So I do a lot of writing. So it's important for me to have connection and enough power for the for using my computer. This is where I hang out, right? right? Like this is my couch, and right. on a hot day I can open both doors and have a nice breeze, and on a cold day I just leave the back open or close up but so this gives me a spot I can I can sit with my head I'll just move this little fan that's just for condensation if I if I need it but yet these two come off and I can either just put them on the floor if I just want to lounge down there and use mm -hmm. this as a bit of a pillow or it becomes the bed for a guest and then storage underneath the bed big yes. area down there there is a big area so this particular van has a basement and it's it's called a stow and go but it's not where the seats were they actually created this is the 2017 i'm not sure when they when else they've done it but they created a basement essentially that had a bifold door and i just took the bifold door off and i used that to put my battery and my inverter mm -hmm. because they're very heavy right so i wanted it really low and also i kind of wanted it to have its own compartment so yeah so these cushions are this cushion split in half so if I'm inside the van, I just have to take off half, move it to here, and then there's a trap door. Just to lift up and get in. Yeah, it lifts right. up, it stays up by itself, so it's not conking me on the head. And so with the stow and go, there's a huge amount of space under there. 
Yes. Does the stone go under here? No, no because this this variety, just the middle seats just come out. Okay. And then the back stone goes. I took those ones out. Right. But this basement is just part of the storage that this van has, naturally. This is essentially my, you know, my closet. So I determined right from the beginning that I, I would only allow myself as much clothing as would fit. And so I found two bins that fit perfectly in that space. All I have to do in the morning is just pull them out. So essentially they just slide in and out. And just like on the other side, I can take the cushion off from the inside and lift the trap door. So I can also access my clothes from inside. I put my winter jacket, my winter boots, my, my hat, my gloves, my bathing suit, like things that I only off use season. off season yeah. stuff. And it just, that's where it lives. Uh huh. And this, you can see that like the wiring ran along there and then you can kind of see into the other side. Right, you can see the plug. Yeah. yeah, so it's where the, the electrical things live. Right. I, ins I ask three standard questions and okay. you tell me if you don't want to answer them. <laughs> sure. Uh, you're on some kind of Canadian disability to support yourself. Yes. And if you don't want to tell no, me now. Okay. No, I, okay. I'm, I don't see any reason to hide it at right. this point. So I, I was medically um, released when I left the military and so I have a military pension. And um, how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> did we t did we cover that? No, I don't think you did. So that that was kind of an interesting thing. I would see the big porta potties and all these you know quite elaborate setups for that. Yeah, I'm just not that complicated. So I have a 50 milliliter yogurt container with a lid on it that I use if I need to pee in the night, and I'm fairly predictable otherwise. So I just go to wherever there's facilities. Okay. For that. And most often, you know, when I started out, I was at uh, the federal campgrounds, then the provincial campgrounds. It's not too often that I've needed to be, you know, out completely without facilities. And so how do you shower? So I, I guess I have sort of two or three different ways. One is I have a wash basin and I warm up warm water every day, soap and water, just in my van, have a, a nice, I call it a sponge bath or just a washcloth bath. Every three days, whether I need it or not, I go to town and have a shower. So here in Quartzite, awesome facilities. You know, $8 gets you 20 minutes with shampoo and a bar of soap and a towel and a washcloth and a little room. Um, truck stops also have that Flying J back in Canada. And I'm pretty sure I've seen them down here. Yes. Um, and I like to swim. So anytime I see a recreational center for four bucks, three bucks, not only do I get a shower, but and get to have a swim mm -hmm. and talk with local people about what's going on in their town and I enjoy that. So it really hasn't been a problem either. Uh, so Kit, do, uh, do you have any way for people to get in touch with you or follow you? Yeah, I do actually. So I, after years of not using Facebook and online media very much, I found it a wonderful way to connect with other travelers. So I have a, a Facebook page that I consider like a public page and I just invite people to come and follow along. I post almost every day about the day-to-day -day part of this adventure and they can find me as Kit Vantastic with a V. <laughs> Kit Vantastic. Kit Vantastic. There's a couple of YouTube videos. I wouldn't go so far as to say I have a YouTube channel, although I do. But one is just a tour of the van when it first got built, and the other is a, a bit of a story about winter camping in Canada. And um, I have an Instagram account, This Fantastic Life, and then I have a travel blog, and it's called This Fantastic Life, and it's at .ca. And it's more of the storytelling aspect of, of this adventure, and I'd, I'd love to hear from, from anyone, really. It's, so many people shared with me when I was coming into this and I am so happy to be part of a community and if I can help anyone along the way I'd like to do that. Very good, thank you. Okay. Well Kit, thanks so much for sharing your uh, your home with us and your really creative ideas. I just really appreciate it. Thank you. You're very welcome. And folks, if you got some great ideas out of this and I, I can't see you how you didn't, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll visit with you later.